Hey, how y'all doing, brothers? Good Everybody evening. Good. Good, good. evening, Hi, guys. We, we all right tonight? Indeed. Yeah, yeah, we all right. Yeah, Hold on, sure, what's sure. the weather like down there? Because I'm seeing, my mom is in St. Louis, she's about 65. What y'all sitting on? Because we about 45, 50 on average up here. What y'all doing, 65? Yeah. It's actually, it was actually pretty nice down here. Yeah, it was. I, I, I clocked it at about 65 tonight, today. That'll work. So you didn't have no coat on today is what you're saying. Bro. Oh, no, but I haven't had a coat on this winter yet. Oh, okay. Told, yeah. You not need a coat down here. Even when it's cold, you don't need no coat down here. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, y'all already know what we were sitting on. We got about almost eight feet of snow. Brother, you picked the perfect time. We, we had about eight feet of snow. There's still snow wow. on from before Christmas. That's unreal. That's unreal. Wow. Well, fellas, listen, I'm excited about tonight. We have Absolutely. been talking about financial literacy, just trying to um, better educate ourselves on the alternative things that we can do um, to, to be better stewards of what we have mm -hmm. um, in this pandemic and in this climate where there's so much going on. Um, it's, it's, it's really refreshing to be able to uh, provide information for ourselves, but also to share that information with everybody else so that we all can have a piece of this pie. I know uh, last week, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, I think, Kyle, you had mentioned uh, when our conversation with Steve, or was it Steve? Somebody we were talking to, and you said it felt like we were having a backstage pass, like we were given. That was Steve, um, that was, that was Steve, Steve yeah. right? Yeah. So, so tonight, I, I believe it's going to be the same thing. And for all of you who are um, joining us, thank you so much for joining us. And we I want to have a conversation tonight about financial literacy, and we have a financial financial advisor um, that's going to be with us tonight. His name is Lionel Brock. Um, he is from Toledo, Ohio, a uh, long time, a friend, and um, we've known him for quite some time. And we're just excited about what he's going to talk about, and he represents how money works. So he's going to talk to us a little bit about that, and I'm just I'm just excited to to, to hear um, what he has to say tonight. Hey man, I'm excited as well. Um, he got the, we, we just spoke to him a little bit and all of his voice is just the spirit of humility that I love. Yeah. 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 I yeah. love that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely excited. gentle, gentle, gentle. Uh, he's kind of big too, right? Yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah. yeah. He, he's tall. Yeah. I think about Dane's height. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He's 6'4? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he might yeah. be able to hoop a little bit. I, I think he does too. Okay. I think he does. So so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go. <laughs> yeah. So so let's open with prayer, and then and then we'll go ahead and bring um and bring Lionel in and and um, have this awesome conversation tonight. So, uh, Kyle, you want to hit us? You want to you want to pray for us tonight? Lord, we thank you for another day. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for. The warm weather, thank you for the cold weather. We just thank you for everything. Um, thank you for this time of fellowship. We hope that something will be said that will enlighten someone, that will inspire someone, um, that will give them the information they need to make better choices. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for our Elder Brock up in uh, Ohio. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. So. So we we let we, we might as well just go ahead and bring him in because I know he's uh, he's waiting here and um, I'm just excited about about this conversation. Yep. It's a very needed conversation to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, and bring him in. What what and while I bring him in, what are what are you some of you guys some of you guys initial thoughts when you when you think about financial literacy in our community? Like what are your thoughts like about that? What you got, bro? You know you, you know, the, the word literacy is such an important word um, because finances is financial literacy. There's a big difference between reading green eggs and ham mm -hmm. and read Euclid's theorems, right? It's just different levels to this. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to finances, there's different levels to this. And it, you, you really understand who's reading green eggs and hams in the financial sense <laughs> and who's in, you know, Euclid's theorems or some other uh, Stephen Hawkins theories or whatever, you know. Right. So 
I, I really think in any in any case, I think it, it's helpful for everybody. Everybody can always improve on their literacy, um, just being exposed to new ideas, new words, new concepts, yeah. new vocabulary. And maybe that will open up an avenue into something else, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. So true. So, so I mean, and I, I think, you know, the, the whole concept of uh, literacy across the board, like you're saying, Kyle, is, mm -hmm. is, is vital and even that much more with money and our finances. Um, so we have tonight, um, Lionel Brock is here with us. Um, he's a financial advisor. He's also uh, representing How Money Works and uh, financial uh, literacy specialist and um, a tremendous asset to the industry, one we've known for quite some time. So um, Lionel, welcome tonight. Thank you so much for being a part. We are so excited to have you. Awesome, brothers. I'm glad to be here. Excited. Oh, excited. thank you, brother. Yes. I yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So Kyle, did you wanna you wanted to you wanna facilitate tonight or you know? Sure. So so first of all, um, I was looking at the website. Um, Lionel, and it was, it's, it's just amazing, just some amazing information there. So mm. first, I just want to ask, just tell the audience a little bit about yourself, you know, who you are, you know, just talk to us a little bit Definitely. about you. Sure. So born and raised here in Toledo, Ohio, um, was raised uh, at a Christian home and uh, very active in a church and community. Um, but I actually started to get my degree in pharmacy. I want to be a pharmacist. That's kind of where I started. So I went to a pharmacy school here at the University of Toledo and got my bachelor's in pharmacology, toxicology, worked in research for about eight years. Um, wow. Yeah, I actually liked it. You know, I'm a big science geek. I love working in the lab. But then I felt more like a, a kind of like a lab rat. You know, I'm just pushing lab prescriptions and yes. experiments and pushing them out the door. And I was like, you know, I can do this, but I really wasn't fulfilled in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, uh, go back, this is 2008, big market bubble, people are losing jobs, a lot of cutbacks, our company had a big layoff, my position was eliminated. Mm. Wow. So here I go, I'm a college grad, married, got the kids, got the wife, did everything the right way, I thought I was on my way, right. and I had my legs come from underneath me, like, wow. boom, no job. Wow. And so I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> what is this? You know? Right. <laughs> so I, at that time, I actually went back to school. Uh, I said, you know, I'm not going to see her on the sideline. I'm going to go back to school, get my master's in business. And Ooh. I started in um, insurance. And so I actually started with a company, Aflac, more of a Ooh. supplemental uh -huh. duck. Uh -huh. I know that's big in Atlanta. We um, all familiar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Aflac duck. And so I was good there. Rookie of the year, getting a lot of awards. I was helping families, but I felt like it was more of a band-aid type of solution. You know, mm -hmm. if you work in a company, the company offers to you, but then if you leave the company, it's gone. So yeah. I'm writing people, getting them set up. And then two, three months later, they're gone. I'm like, okay, this is a, a rat race that I did not want to stay in. Yeah. Um, and so I ran into a good brother. His name is Urshad Bannister. And he told me an opportunity with a company where I could have a more powerful impact on people's lives. Mm. Um, that was allowing to do more than just insurance, but financial planning. You know, I'm helping with so many different areas that's changing families and changing lives. Yeah. And that really spoke to me. Um, and I've been with this company now for almost 11 years uh, doing just that, helping families change their lives financially. And it's, it's been a blessing. It's been amazing. Oh, wow. that's amazing. That's, amazing that's, 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 a, um, that's a change of course right there, going from pharmacology to financial planning. Mm -hmm. And from what it sounds like, you didn't, you didn't imagine this. You just went mm -hmm. to school. You went back to school for business, and somehow you got into the insurance business. Yep. So my thought was I had the pharmaceutical background. I want to get a degree in business and go into pharmaceutical sales. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, a lot of people were in pharmaceutical sales. It was very saturated, very difficult to get in. And mm -hmm. the folks that were in the industry was like, you know what? It's not worth it. And they were getting out. And so it was a, a transition time. And I'm like, okay, now I got my master's degree. I have this all this science background. This is what I kind of want to do. But I saw a lot of people getting out. Um, and it really kind of struck me like, okay, do I want that type of lifestyle as well? 
Um, and so, like I said, I ran into my brother. He really brought me in, took me on his wing and uh, kind of taught me the business. Hey, you can make an uh, impact on people's lives that can change their future forever. And I was like, okay, I'm in. So that's, that's cool. wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> and you know what? It, it, it's funny. We often we, we kind of talked about this last week, how you start, your path starts out one way. Right. Mm -hmm. But just how you how you start being open. I think you said this, Kyle, you know, before um, and we talked about how sometimes frustration in life can actually be the best thing that happens to us because it Absolutely. forces us to do something that we probably wouldn't have done before, which ends up being what we we're supposed to be anyway. So I think that that's that's an awesome journey. And and and, um, and the fact that you've been so successful and been able to help people all these many years, I think it's a wonderful thing. That's wonderful. Definitely. definitely. So let, let me ask you this. Um, yeah. You, you, you went to school, you got this extensive background in labs, um, and now you're helping people in a financial aspect. Mm -hmm. What do you like the most about this particular field that you're in now? Um, I think I like most is the transformation I'm able to see in people's lives. So mm -hmm. I've sat down with clients, and then plus our company's a little different. We we focus on helping everybody. We're not looking for the top 1%, 5%, 10% with the highest incomes. We're willing to teach and educate everyone. And so I have the opportunity to go in a situation where I maybe have a, a young couple just getting um, started, having a baby, can't pay their bills, struggling financially. I can help teach them the basics of finance, how to get themselves on their feet. Uh, we tell folks, we're the folks that get in the hole with you get you out the hole and then get you onto the road to financial freedom. And very few people are willing to get in the, in the pit, so to speak, with you when you're in yeah. those difficult times. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. And, 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 wow. and Kyle, Kyle, we, since we've been in the industry and Dane as well, you know, yeah. we see the disparity, you know, there are certain uh, companies that have a target market where they just want a certain class and certain people and all that. So I think it's a beautiful thing that we share that uh, model that we, we want to help everybody and we want to have no matter where you fall you're trying to get started you know or, or you're down the road we, we have something to offer um so that's beautiful absolutely that's very good definitely so i'm not my question i, I do have another question um sure. so you just to be clear are you you're doing financial planning you're doing insurance mm -hmm. no no I'm, I'm, what, what 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 do you feel like your your role is so it's really helping folks put a plan together. So we okay. start with the education piece. You know, first you need a, a good financial basis or foundation to understand how money works to one, get your bills in order, pay your bills, be on time, you know, prove your credit. All these things kind of overlap together. And so mm -hmm. we start with the education piece and then it's okay. How do we start leading them to financial freedom? You know, mm -hmm. we have five pillars of financial freedom that they need to get in place first. So we teach mm -hmm. them that. And then it's, okay, once you get that done, what's the next step? So, uh, basically, so basically, kind of like what a trainer would do for your physical uh, body, you're kind of doing that for people's financial wellness, like a, a top-down or a bottom-up approach just yeah. to get them straightened on their feet. Kinda. Correct, correct, correct. So I let me ask you. Go ahead, go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah Kyle, I have, a, I have a question. So, so brother mm -hmm. Lionel, this, this kind of gets me um, thinking about uh, uh, the, our, our particular community. Mm -hmm. And I just want to ask you, like, in your experience, what, what kinds of um, hurdles have you seen or objections to people moving forward uh, with something like this have you seen in your, in your experience? That was sure. my question as well. <laughs> That's a great question. Of great course, question. Uh. <laughs> and us in the African-American community, we see this from a day to day. I say the number one is shame where they are currently. Mm -hmm. People are, are, are shamed the fact, oh my gosh, I, I'm at this point, I'm at this age and I still haven't got things together. Yeah. Um, and not being able to, was it face the music, face the reality of, you know what, I need some help. You know, yeah. if you're if you're in a kitchen and one of your pipes bust, you got water pouring out, you don't hesitate to call the plumber right away. Say, hey, I got a hole in my faucet. I need some help. But when your finances is flying out the window, going down the drain, you just keep... it like this. Exactly. <laughs> nobody raising hands, nobody, you know, and, and but a lot of that has to do with our industry as a whole. We make it intimidating to sit down with a financial professional. And yeah. that has to that has to get out the window. 
you know, because people can feel intimidated by the way, you know, their, their posture, you know, the tie up to the neck, you know, you know, yeah. in the waiting room, I'll call you when I'm ready, you know, you go uh, my time. All those things make people feel intimidated and they yeah. get in the room, I don't belong here or, or he can't help me or I, I'm not in a position where I need to be. And so we want to throw those shame things out the window and say, look, we know where you are. We've been where you've been. We can help you get where you need to go. And, right. and you know what? Um, I don't know if y'all, yeah, we all old, old um, but y'all remember that movie, Silence of the Lambs, right? <laughs> of course. John don't remember that. John was about three when that came out. You go ahead, bro. But, okay. Um, okay. It, you know, in that in the movie Silence of the Lambs, they were trying to uh, find out who this guy is that's kidnapping these people. And one of the clues that they used was he said something that has always stuck with me. He says, you're attracted to what you see every day, right? Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that in our communities, especially when we was in New York, in our communities, you see a lot of payday loan places, check cashing places. Mm -hmm. um just a whole bunch of fixing mm -hmm. putting patches financial mm -hmm. patch systems yeah. in our communities and you don't see a lot of financial planning institutions in our communities so I'm, I'm i'm thinking maybe that's why in our community there might be a little bit of shame because if if we have a financial problem you know what let me just go to this payday loan place or to this title loan place and yep. the, the access to somebody like yourself to actually talk about what the issues is, we, we just don't see that in our community. We just don't know that hope is available. So yeah. true. Do, you, do you find that in, in, your, in, in your practice where people just are not aware of the help that's available? So true, yes. And I think that's, that's key because we don't know what we don't know. And so many times people just do what other people do. You know, well, my daddy didn't have no money. My mom didn't have no money. I guess I ain't gonna have no money either. I might as well find a way to figure it out. Like you said, yeah. uh, instead of buying a couch, let me go to rent a center and pay $50 a week for 10 years. Yeah, for, for 10 happens, years, right? exactly. Interest, killing them, killing them, killing them. And then don't miss a payment. Then they're pulling right. it out your house, repossessing it, and you still owe for it. It's like, it's out of control. And they're passing your credit up. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so it's, it's that something. concept. That mind, It's a mindset. It's a mindset. And we talked about that, uh, uh, Elder. We talked about the mindset part and, and how, yeah, the mindset um, how, how, right, Dan? Because I don't remember you were speaking about that, too. And, and, yeah. and, and that how do we get our people to, um, to see the fact that we all have to start somewhere? Right. Exactly. And, 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 and very few of us are born with a silver spoon. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're in an age now where information is available. Um, resources are available. How do we get people to, um, to, to, to bite on this whole idea of that it's possible that someone else who might have uh, accumulated things in life started where they are, no matter how low they've been? Exactly. Yeah, I That's think it, good. it goes. Good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother Lionel. No, you got. No, you got I was saying. I think it's it's us as professionals, you know, being willing to be vulnerable as well, and say, hey, look, you know, we not, we're not perfect, you know, and right. but just like by grace, there could be me, and so and having yeah. some grace for folks that we sit in front of, you know, when you sit on the other side of the table and you're the one getting help, it feels different. But once you've done that and you've made it, okay, now how can you help the other person on the other side of the table? You know, that's, and that's right. us being vulnerable, being honest and say, look, you know, hey, been there, done that. Let me show you how to get out. That's, that's it. Wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. It. We, we've talked about that on, on our program where this, this unwillingness to pass on information for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it's a struggle in our community. It's, right. it's a real struggle. People are scared to talk about these issues. We, 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 John, you know, all the time, people just don't want to talk about these issues. I did look at your site and I, I noticed that you do have a specialty of, of helping people and mentoring people to go from being, I think it's the Ease the E program. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. with people go from being an employee to an entrepreneur. Tell yes. us a little bit about your strategy with that. 
Yeah, so we do have a, an offer and a program where we help folks move, like you said, from the employer to the uh, entrepreneur. It's like E to E. Um, and what that really entails is a leadership course. It's a leadership process of bringing mm -hmm. folks in and one, teaching them and educating them first. Um, right. And then inspiring them. Hey, look, what are you good at? What is in your hand? You know, what are what is your talent? And try to use that talent. Maybe it's a, a side gig. Maybe it's you doing something entrepreneurship, something small. But it's giving them the power to say, you know what, you can do it. You know, and giving them that support. You know, and offering just the opportunity that there's other things out there that you could be doing to help supplement your income. So you know, everybody, we we get this question pretty much every week. So I, I want to get your take on it. Everybody is pregnant with an idea. Everybody wants to cross that threshold where they go from being just the employee to taking control of their own life. But you're pregnant for all this time and you're just waiting for your water to break, right? Yeah. So what do you what would be your suggestion of how do you make that transition from depending on the paycheck to really taking matters into your own hands and taking control of your destiny? So I, I really feel it's going to be you sitting down and developing a detailed business plan, you mm. ma ma a roadmap, you know, to define what is your business and what does it look like? How are you moving from where you are to where you want to go? I mean, it's very similar to what we do when we sit down with folks, um, bring them in financially, where you are today and where do you want to go? The same thing in business. Where are you today right. in your business and where do you want to take it to and have a roadmap defined you know, that you can say, yes, I, I have a business and this is how I'm going to do it. And you lay that on the table. Now we can sit down and have that conversation and, and put you in position or connected with the right folks to help bring that to reality. But you got to have to that even, thing written down. To even see if it's feasible. Because, exactly. I mean, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yes. And, and, and the responsibility, and, that, and I love how, you, how you're talking about this, Lionel, because it, it, a lot of times, you know, and especially in our community, the temptation there, because there's been years of oppression and all that, um, and, uh, th that there, there is an expectation of, of, of what we deserve. And, and, that, and there's, there's, trust me, there's a whole lot of truth to, to that. <laughs> but at yeah. the same time, you know, um, taking responsibility for the fact that, look, if, if, this is, if this is the life that I'm going to have to live, I'm going to use that frustration that I feel as a tool to turn it into something, right? So, so it's taking a risk on yourself, taking a chance on yourself, you know, taking advantage of certain resources that you might be intimidated to take and just being curious about a possibility. And you did that even with, the, um, with, your, with your own story about, about um, how you, you, you lost a job through that whole uh, thing and your, your, your legs got cut from under you. But it was something inside of you that said, you know what? Nah, man, I got to do something about this. And oh, now, yeah. look, look, now you're able to help other people and, uh, and you're paying it forward. So I think that it's really about taking a chance on yourself and having the courage, use that frustration as a motivation to have the courage to step out and just do it. Sure. That's true. That's true. Let me jump in right here. Um, yeah. We're going to swing it on back. So Sister Styles has a question. So I'm going to read the question. I'll start it off and then I'll hand it over to uh, Brother Lionel and just to see what he says. So she says, Sister Style says, do you think some people are afraid of success or progress? And it's mm. interesting. We talked Great about this several weeks ago, maybe several months ago on different occasions. And uh, we always uh, highlight the fact that, yes, I, I honestly feel that people are afraid of change. Right, because we get so stagnant, we get comfortable, and especially in our community, I, I think I even said it last week. It's like we don't want to go nowhere. We're afraid to go get a passport. We're afraid to get on a plane. We don't want to go up the street. We don't go in that neighborhood because of that. And we got to get out of that mindset. I think uh, Brother Lionel touched on that. It's just the mindset of just really just being, you know, being our own worst enemy you know my daughter she plays tennis and she's extremely good but it'd be some matches where i have to tell her you know you got to get out of your own way you in your own way you the one that's causing this to not go in your favor so i think in our community or just people in general they got to learn how to get out their own way let me pass it to you brother yes sir i would definitely agree with that um and like you, you kind of hit on the head i think it's fear um, but a lot of times what, what, what kind of, 
I don't know, kind of stagnates them where they can't move, uh, mm. we're, we're victims of our past. Mm. And so a lot of times we're, why they're resistant to change is because every time in the past when change happened, things got worse. Yes. You know, that's, that's we lived in this house, but then something happened and it got worse. Yeah. Yep. And we had to go over here. And then we had to move in with our auntie. And then when we was there for three weeks, and then something happened, it changed, and it got worse. So every time they think of change, they think of it getting worse. Opposed mm. to change that can be, you know what, this could be a positive change. You know, yeah. they, but again, they haven't seen it enough. They haven't yeah. heard it enough. It's not in their spirit. They haven't received that good can happen if I change. And that's, that, that is huge. Mm. <laughs> that's because yeah. I, I, yeah. You mentioned something. I heard you mention something. Talk to us about how you dealt with the emotional challenges. How did you manage your emotion, those emotional challenges? Because you said you did things the right way. You you went to school. You got married. Then you had kids. You know, you you worked a job, and you know things. The rug got kind of got pulled out from under you. Yeah. How did you how did you manage those emotions when you're doing what you believe you're supposed to be doing, and things kind of go left like you was just talking about? It it was tough. I'll be honest with you. We're talking about being vulnerable at the time. You know, I didn't know what to do. Honestly, <laughs> I, I I did not know what wow. to do. I was in a That's situation. Real. So here, first I was in the lab, right? I was working in the laboratory. Yeah. I got promoted to training mm -hmm. coordinator. Now I'm doing training in Ohio and California, flying back and forth. I got this right. big promotion. Things are good. We just built a house. Everything's going great. And now I don't have a job. I can't even pay my mortgage. And mm -hmm. it was, wow. hey, Lord, what do I do? And that, that hurt. And as a brother, you know, as the man of the house, I mean, that hurts your pride. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was yeah. always, I was like, man, I just want to stay in the bed, cover my head. It's like, I'm done, you know, but I realized I couldn't do that. And so it, it was a process for me to say, you know what, you need to get up from here and keep going. Mm. You know, they say when one door closes, another one open, but it might even be a window, but something's going to open, you know, and you got to right. look for it. You know, it's that, that whole thing about change. Yeah. Change happened to me and it got bad, but guess what? Change can't happen and it can get good. So. Absolutely. And, and you, you know, I think I think people are just used to dancing with the devil they know. You know, mm -hmm. I think they scared things because you know the devil that you dance with, but at some point you got to realize, wait a minute, I'm dancing with the devil. Mm -hmm. And at, you know, at some point you got to say, I'm I'm tired of this. And it's time for me to do something else. And I think people are scared of those emotions that you just talked about, being vulnerable not knowing what to do, not knowing how you're going to pay this, how you're going to pay that. They, they're scared of their pride. So that's why I think that's so powerful what you was just saying about how even when you're educating now, part of your strategy is just to be vulnerable. Tell people, you know, I don't have it all together. I'm still working this thing out. I think that's key. I think that's beautiful. Definitely, definitely. Appreciate yeah. That. And now, I think the other part of that... Yeah. Let me just, let me, and Kyle, I think the other part to that is not only am I working it out, but look how far I've come because I was there and look at the transition, you know, because the transformation true. is what people need to see. Kind of going back to your point from before, people do what they see on the day to day. You understand? And if we in our community and just uh, as a young black professional men, if we really start to be a resource for the up and coming and start sharing information and letting them know, you know, it's cool to be smart. It's cool <laughs> to know better to do some foolishness. Yeah. It's cool to take care of your family and provide for your family and actually be there for your family. So I think all of those kind of like, you like couple in to the fact of, just, you know, having the right information, that financial literacy, you know, because I guarantee you this, and then I'll be done after this, because if folks really cared about their families and about where they see their families going, they wouldn't be acting up because they got too much to lose. They would have too much to lose, you know, and that don't just go from a criminal standpoint. You know, I'm also referring to those who just don't want to get up and, and leave a legacy behind for their families because, you know, didn't nobody do it for them. Because we see a lot of that. 
Yeah, yeah John Cena. A lot of sitting with people. I ain't had nothing, so why I got to leave something for somebody? You know, they got to go out there and they got to figure it out. I'm like, what kind of mindset is that? <laughs> why now, brother, Lyle, well, I see you shaking your head because I know yeah, that's yeah, so I and I think we've been preaching that same thing. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna just let you go with that one because I saw it. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go we, ahead. We didn't struck a nerve right now. <laughs> oh man, that is that is so true. Uh, and my heart goes out to families and, and situations where no one took the time to prepare with simple life insurance. No one took the time to protect their family, their financial stability by having a policy in place. And you see it day after day, funeral after funeral. Mm -hmm. With this COVID, it's been out of control. People are passing yeah. left and right. And people are saying, oh yeah, gr Granny, she got a policy. No, she don't. Auntie yeah. got one. Yeah. Of course they got yeah, and, and it's, it's stomach and it hurts because yeah. if we just take the time, we're, we we insure our cell phones before we insure our lives, and that's Woo. got to stop. That's got to stop. Everybody got a plan on their on their cell phone. But man, if I drop it, I just take it in. You know, what, what if you pass away? What's gonna happen? You know, but, <laughs> but what if you get dropped? Right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so we got it teach. And that's why I love our company. Um, we have a book, How Money Works. And we encourage folks to get it. If they want a copy, they can reach out to me. My goal is to get that in the hands of folks who want the information. Because mm -hmm. you need to know how money works. That's it. Let me ask you something. If there was one thing that about money that you wish people knew, what would it be? I would say the rule of 72. Okay understanding how money can double if you understand compound interest. People don't understand compound interest. It works for you when you save. It works against you with your creditors, with yeah. your credit cards. Mm. So you got to understand that concept. Got to understand mm. that concept. So, so, so just, just a snapshot, brother, because we want to give people too much. We want them to get the book and we want them to reach out to you. Right? Right, right. So well, for the rule 72, if you can just, if you can just give us a, 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 just a sound bite of what that means, the concept of, con, uh, of, of compound interest, which is, a, which is a mechanism that a lot of insurance companies have in them to be yeah. able to help people to grow money and all that stuff, tax-free, all these other things that we can do. So if you can just give us a sound bite about what that looks like. I think that would be helpful for, for if this is somebody's first time hearing that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So the rule of 72 is how you figure out how long it's going to take your money to double. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you take 72 divided by your interest rate, it's going to tell you how long it takes your money to double. So if you take 72 and times it by 1%, if someone's giving you a 1% rate of return, that's going to take you 72 years for your money to double. Mm -hmm. so it's way too long. But uh -huh. if you take that same 72 like, uh, divided by 12, you know, it's going to take you, what, maybe six years for your money to double. Um, and so you got to understand that concept. But the same works against you at the credit cards. You get a credit card, that interest is $24 or $16 and 16%. Uh, it's going to it's going to take their money doubles every four and a half years. Mm -hmm. So when you're paying that credit card, they're getting twice the money from you mm -hmm. on it credit card interest rate yeah. um, because of that relationship. So you got to understand how that works, but it's, it blows your mind once you understand that concept. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, yeah Go ahead. The, we, we talked a little bit about the compound. People don't understand that compound. I think that is so key. And we talked about that a little bit last week where you have to really figure out a way to get the money to work for you. Because like we talked about last week, um, we work hard for the money and then we spend it and just give it to somebody else. And they take yeah. those same exact dollars that we give them and they make that money do things that we wish we would have done. So the compound interesting, people don't understand that. Um, first of all, what is the name of the book? Yes, name of the book is How Money Works. Okay. Um, you can go to my website, uh, reach out to okay. me, and I can uh, get folks in contact of that. It's called howmoneyworks.com backslash Lionel Brock. We, we, also, uh, we also had a question. Um, I think someone, I can't see the name on my thing. I think somebody asked, uh, do you also do investment literacy? Yes, yes. We talk about the importance of investing. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. So definitely. all of that, definitely. all of that is, is a conversation that that is is able to be had. For those of you who might be interested in in financial literacy, you might be interested in investment literacy. We will we will definitely be posting um, Lionel's information and the uh, the book, the, the resources that um, he does have. Um, we will definitely be able to provide that um, to you, so you'd be able to get your hands on that. This is so important, and in this time of, of the pandemic, and you know where everything is kind of shut down, this is really a perfect time for us to really start looking at what we got going on. Start That's looking true. at your policies. Start looking at what what you think you have. Have the conversation, even if you think you have it all together. Because, like we we're saying before, a lot of people, oh yeah, you know, mom's got it. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, they they all right. And, and when you need it, it's too late to try to figure that out. That's so true. having that conversation now and doing that stuff now is so important. I have one final question. One final question. Um, you talked about what you wish people would know. Do In your practice, do you see any common misconceptions people have about money, particularly in our community? Oh, wow. So many. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, I, I think it, it just, a lot of it has to go with they, they just do what everyone else does. It's kind of follow the leader. You know, if someone makes a bad decision, they tend to make a bad, bad decision. You know, they're getting credit cards, they're maxing them out. Then they are like, okay, I, I can't pay this anymore. You know, well, let me just go get another credit card and then I'll pay that card with that card. I mean, just bad decisions after bad decisions. Um, and then it's like, what do you do with that? You know, and it's really, they just need to be sat down and taught the basics. Okay, how does money really work? What do you need to do first? you know, to get out of that rat race. Yeah. The beautiful thing about this conversation is we've said this before, you know, all of us started Lord. from somewhere, you know, yes. and, and, and none of us are perfect. All and a, lot of, a lot of times, a lot of what we've learned is come from our own mistakes, sure. come from things that, that we, we had to uh, stumble over and figure out and, 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 and use resources that, that were at our disposal at the time to, to increase what we know now. So you, this, you can start wherever you are. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this conversation is that you can start right where you are. It's just starting with the curiosity. How can something like this work for me? Where, look, look at my stuff. What, what can we do to help me out? And I think that's, if you start in there, that's the beginning of changing your whole life. That's it. Absolutely. That's yeah. what it is. And, and like, like, uh, Brother Brock said, you know, none of us are perfect. We sometimes we got to be vulnerable as well. Mm -hmm. um, if 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 we were all uh, billionaires or millionaires, we probably would be on somebody's beach somewhere. Um, so we all have room to grow. We all have ways we can improve. But just like he said, this is the first step as far as just getting the information out there. If you have some information, share it. Let your family know. Let your friends know. Let somebody know. Don't let the information go to waste. If you need information, you need to come to a place just like this. Well, all you got to do is listen and we'll throw some concepts, some ideas out there. And, you know, maybe that would be the first step in you going to the next level. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so, it, brothers, right. we, we, we thank you, Lionel. We thank you so much for being with us tonight. We got to uh, bring you back, man. We got to bring yes. you back. I was going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> Brother Lionel, we got to do a part two, maybe a series with you. All right. Uh, because yeah. I think the information that you have provided for us is extremely valuable. It's extremely timely. And we're getting, we're, we're getting people are reaching out to us all the time. Hey, listen, this, this, this whole season has triggered me to really take my situation seriously. So yeah. we definitely um, will be um, um, looking forward to having you on uh, as many more times as you <laughs> you like to come on um, because I believe you are a valuable resource and I, I'm sure people are really really being being blessed by um, the information that you provided for us. So Kyle, go ahead and uh, uh, you know share the information and you know do your thing. Uh, I think it might be interesting. Maybe it, uh, we'll come on. Maybe do a few chapters of your book. Maybe we'll find some things mm -hmm. on there that we can focus on some misconceptions, some challenges mm -hmm. that's. You know, common to people and we'll talk about it and just deal with it and confront it you know that sounds so good please please come on back so before we close out um brother lionel what we wanted you to do just tell the people how can they get in contact with you how they can get the book just kind of give us a rundown yep so you can uh reach out to me on my website uh it's wealthwave.com back backslash lionel brock 
And the other would be howmoneyworks.com backslash Lionel Brock. Uh, reach me there. All my contact information is there. Uh, reach out to me. If I can help you in any way, please do not hesitate uh, to reach out. So I'm here to help. That's what it's all about. All That's right. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's good. Well, Lionel, you, you, you've been amazing. We appreciate you. Um, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of feedback. Uh, for people who have been watching and 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 kind of um, you know interacting with us here, we got a lot of interaction tonight. So I know uh, a lot of people have been really blessed by by what you share with us tonight. Hey, it's an honor, privilege. I appreciate the opportunity. You brothers are doing fantastic work. I'm just honored to be a little peon, part of the group. You know, oh, I'm just, come on, brother, I'm blessed nah. to be here. So I appreciate what y'all <laughs> doing for the community. I mean, keep doing what you're doing, man. You guys are you guys are doing it. So. Amen. Thank you. Sir. Thank, you. So Thank you. All, if all hearts and minds clear, we are gonna close it out. Then we are gonna pray. All hearts and minds clear. Yeah. That's so Kyle, cool. just just give give us uh, help, help people be able to reach out. You know, Martin and Murray, and and uh, yes, you know how they can reach out. Um, we're gonna be here next week. We as always, we're gonna have an interesting conversation. We always gonna have some guests. We're gonna be here next week on Thursday, eight thirty p.m. Just like always, you can reach us on our Facebook page, which is Martin and Murray. Wealth Solutions, please come ask questions. Let us know if there's a topic that you want to discuss. Um, we'll, we'll dig into it. We'll find somebody to talk about it. Just let us know. We'll be glad to tackle it and confront it. Um, if you need to reach out to us, you can hit us on our Facebook page. You can inbox us. You can comment on this video. Or you can go to our website. It's www.martinandmurray.com. Again, that's www.martinandmurray.com. You can even give us a call at 877-288-PLAN. 877-288-PLAN. All right? Very and good. Very oh. good. I got All one right. question, then we can go to the Lord. Do we have a guest next week, or are we going to do a recap? Well, we'll probably, we'll probably, uh, uh, we'll probably do a recap, because I think uh, Brother Lionel gave us a lot to chew on. So depending on the okay. feedback that we get back from people, we might be able to engage some more and then go ahead and, and, and make sure we, we put up that book information so that people will be able to have access to get in that as well. So right. maybe we'll do a recap next week and then we'll plan to have uh, a guest the week after that. But I will be talking to you, Elder uh, Lionel, because uh, we need you back. We need you back. because you oh, we do, bro. Tremendous. Fantastic. So we'll try to work that out with your schedule. I know you're busy, but we will try to coordinate it and uh, see when we can have you back. But that's it. Uh, Thank you, bro. That'll work. Thank That'll you. work. So let's go to the Lord. Who's praying? Go ahead, Dane. All right. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, yet again, we come before you as humble as we can be. Father God, we pray that something was said here that would resonate and encourage those that are listening, that were pinged in and tagged in this video, that they would hear a word that would encourage them to want to do better. Father God, we know that we've all been through the trials and the tribulations, and we ask that you would prick our hearts and draw us more near so that we can be in alignment with what you have for us. So in Jesus' name, we thank you. God bless everyone. Amen and amen. In Jesus' amen. name. Amen. Amen. God bless thank you guys all. tonight. Thank yes. you, brother. Yeah. Thank we you, appreciate brother. You. That was really appreciate good. It. I appreciate you. Awesome. No problem. God bless y'all. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Now.